Okay, let's look uh, real quickly at object styles and what this is. Uh, as, as you've seen, we've worked through some things. Uh, Revit has categories. And so anything that's created belongs to a category of some kind and object styles are applied to categories like walls is a category, roofs is a category, appliances is a category, it, like that. And so the line weights, line, you know, line thicknesses, line types, uh, all of these things go with categories. And so I want to show you where the default ones uh, live at. And if we go to manage, uh, let's see, it's settings. I don't, let's see. Okay, so here we got line weights, line styles. Okay, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for regular settings. Let's see, MAP, structural. Da, da, da. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right place, huh? Settings. Oh, duh, right there, object styles. Ah, ah. I'm so dud sometimes. Okay, so here's all our categories and the default line weights for projection, meaning as you see it, or cut in a section view, the line color, the line pattern, and any material defaults, okay? And of course you can, you know, filter based on, uh, uh, you can filter it based on the work type, okay? Now, I do not recommend you making any changes to these things, okay, because uh, where, wherever you work, they will have things set up the way they want to do things. If you're the only guy or gal working there, then you might want to make changes based on whatever kind of work that you do. Okay, but here's where the defaults live, okay, and same way for annotation objects, okay. These are things that you're, if you're working in some place, your BIM manager or whoever is your, manages all your, your stuff is going to take care of this. So I would not recommend making changes, but that's where it lives, okay? Now, let's look at visibility and graphics. Uh, we can do overrides. And to show you this, let's go to the ground floor. And you may want to follow along with this, okay? So I'm going to go back to hidden line. Now, in your um, in your 1129 class, we're doing a basement plan that has the foundation on it. Most commercial plans will have a separate foundation or footing plan, and then it would have a ground floor plan. Okay, but to show you how visibility and graphics overrides work, I'm, I'm going to show you like that for here. So first of all, um, let's adjust our view range so that we're picking up the footings below. And so I'm going to go down to elevator pit, okay? Now you can see it shows the footings on the outside of the building because the floor is covering up what's visible on the inside. So let's go to visibility and graphics and go down to floors and let's make the floor transparent. So it's still there. It's just it's transparent. Okay, and so now we can see the footing okay on the on the inside of the building also. But usually we're not going to show the concrete hatch pattern and solid lines <clears throat> on footings. So let's go back to visibility and graphics and we'll go back down to our floors. Um, no, let's go to footings. And if your floor pattern is showing, you would override right here and turn off the visibility of your floor pattern. Okay, in this particular case, the pattern is not showing. Okay, so let's go down to structural footings or foundations. And here's another reason why 
you do not want to use the structural foundation to create a floor. Okay. So let's open this up here and let's turn off the pattern. Okay. And I'll hit apply. Uh, something didn't work. Oh, that click didn't work. Okay. Now I'll hit apply and you can see the concrete hatch pattern disappeared. Now the usually um, we're going to use a dash line for our footings and so uh, I don't want double dash. Uh, where's it at? Uh, dash dot. I got dash one eight. Okay so let's go down to hidden and we'll go with the biggest one three eighths inch. Uh, okay and okay. And now you can see it shows our, our, our foundation as being a hidden line with no pattern. Okay. That's a normal way of showing it. If you remember back in 1125. Okay. Um, and that's just an example of how we can, we can do with those things. Okay. Now let's look, um, I changed out this wall and put in a, a wall family that's got CMU and insulation and metal stud and brick and stuff like that. While we're here, let's change that over to chorus and then you'll see how all the detail changes. It just leaves the total extents of the wall. Oh. Okay, so depends on what you want to show. If this were, I, you know, usually you're going to want to show brick on a floor plan. Depends on the job, depends on where you're working. So let's look at our section view while we're here. And we're on medium detail. If I were to go to coarse detail, same thing. Okay. Back to medium there. Um, okay. Let's, okay, so that's visibility and graphics override. Um, and while we're there, we've covered this before. If you don't want something to show up in your drawing, you can turn them off by just, you know, selecting them here. If if we had um, electrical plans, so we, we have an electrical plan and a lighting plan, on our regular floor plan, we would turn off electrical items, fixtures. Same way with all of the mechanical stuff. When, when you get into the 1131 class, We'll be doing uh, lighting, receptacles, switches, uh, and then HVAC. We'll be doing ductwork and registers and things like that. And so on our architectural plans, we would turn off those items so that they would not show up. Okay. And I, I didn't show you this last time. Here we applied a, uh, a view template. If you need to disassociate that, okay, unlink it. You just click on the view template box there and then select none. Okay. And so now you can make any changes in the properties to that plan. But when you apply the, when you link that template back to it, it reverts back to the template. So if you need to make overall changes, you go back up to um, manage your template there. All right, now, uh, I, I think I've probably covered hiding items. So, um, probably most common will be here in a 3D view. Okay, so if, if I want to hide this roof so I can see down inside, uh, one way to do it, if I select it and right click and go hide in view, well, that's, I'm gonna call it a permanent hide. Okay, it is hidden. And the only way to get it back is to come down and click the light bulb. And then you can see it's outlined in pink, okay, around around the edges. And so you would select it and then come back up here, unhide. Okay. A temporary hide, if you just need to hide something so that you can select something below it, is we click on the eyeglasses down here, temporary hide. And you can hide elements, hide categories, whatever. And now it's just temporarily hidden. And you see that from the cayenne box around your window. 
Okay, so that's that's hide, temporary hide. Uh, and I'll go reset. Another way is in the 3D view, you use the section box. <clears throat> and grab the little arrows and, and pull them down or, you know, pull them in from the sides. Either, either way works, okay? And then you can see inside your 3D model. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that back off. Now, we need to address uh, crop regions. And <clears throat> this is, um, let's go to level one and let's look at this wall section. And you can see the extents of the wall section, it goes to the outside. Now, these arrows are independent of the end of, this, of the cutting plane line. So you can move the end of the cutting plane line, and it's, it's, it doesn't affect the crop region, if you will. This is the crop region. And this is the far clip plane, how, how deep into the project it goes. So look at this section here. Okay. <clears throat> So if I go to, um, this one might be a little better to look at. So let's go to this view. Okay, so this box here is our crop region. Okay, so you can adjust it here. And that's the same way as adjusting it back here. You can see there, it drug it, <clears throat> it, drug it down into the next room. If I pull it back here, Go back to my section, you see it pulled it back. Okay, so that's crop region. <clears throat> when when we go to dealing with section views on our drawings, we'll talk more about how to uh, um, how how to put a break in the section. Okay, so basically you click those little indicators there and it, it creates a break in the section view. And we'll deal with that when we get into creating sections. But right here we've got Okay, crop view, we can turn that on, turn it off. Okay, and so that, that shows me the whole project. Okay, crop region visible. I, when I'm modeling, I leave that turned on. Okay, and then when I are, are producing my drawing sheets, <laughs> I want to turn that off because on the actual drawing sheet, let's see here. We really don't want the rectangles around the view showing, okay? Because it, it just doesn't look professional, doesn't look good, doesn't look right. So we would turn those off. And that's right here, crop region visible. So we just uncheck that, okay? Annotation crop, let me turn it back on so you can see it. Annotation crop means, you see the dash line around the outside, that means any Annotations you create have to be within this area for them to be visible. If you do one and it's outside of that area, it will not be visible. So, for example, uh, uh, click it again. See, it tells me, uh, mm, can't see it. And the reason for that, it should have been because it's outside of my annotation. Maybe I have it turned off in visibility graphics. Well, let's look here and see. No, oh, text is on. That was weird. Maybe because I hit the I don't know. Let's try it again. Hmm. I don't I don't know why it didn't show up that first time, but if we drag it out Oh, there it is. I didn't have my crop region out far enough. Okay. 
So you can see how crop region, and you can adjust the size of it, it's okay. <coughs> That's how that deals with. Okay. Um, far clip, let's, um, if, oh, I don't want ceiling plan. When we're talking about far clip, usually it depends on what we're making an elevation of or a section of. We usually don't want to show what's beyond what we're dealing with, okay? So in this case, I'm doing a section through the stairs. I, this wall has nothing to do with the stairway. So I set my far clip so that it doesn't show the wall. And if we come back to the section view here, let me delete those. Okay, you can see it doesn't show the wall there beyond. If if uh, if I change to a shaded, <clears throat> it just has white there because there's nothing behind it because this section deals with the stairway. Okay, if I turn off the far clip, um, and here's my options. No clip, clip without line, clip with line. So if I go no clip, it shows the walls beyond. Okay. If I say clip with a line, eh, I don't know that that, I don't, I'm not sure what the difference is on that. Anyway. Okay. So that gets us through uh, a lot of those things, crop regions. Um... And if it, it's not a good idea to crop a floor plan un, unless we're doing um, match lines and then you're duplicating like like we had it on our ground floor. So we did this earlier in that we've got it split into two views. Okay, and so when I go to the ground floor left, you can see it's cropped <clears throat> so that only the left side shows. Okay, and then I look at ground floor right, it's cropped so that only the right side shows. So that's an example of, of where you would crop a floor plan. <clears throat> we're we're going to deal with uh, some detailed views later where you would create a larger scale, like for a kitchen plan or a bathroom plan, in which we need a larger scale uh, drawing of a specific area. And, and we'll talk about that because that's a very specific type of plan. And so we don't just duplicate a floor plan and then crop it. That's bad practice. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Um, I've got one more that I want to cover this week and then we'll be on to that. So be right back.